and welcome! I'm Lionheart Cartoon, and on this very first video tutorial, I'm going to show you how the Pirate Mirrors 1 posters were made. Before animating anything, all of the posters started as a Photoshop file. Every part that moves on the character was then assigned a layer and colored accordingly. Keeping those items layered is the backbone of those animations. But After Effects is really where everything comes together. And because I imported a PSD file, I didn't have to do all that much tweaking. Of course, I could have saved every layer individually and imported them, but there are a few extra advantages with working with a PSD file. Now, I'm using After Effects CS5, and the main tool I've used is right there. It's called the Puppet Pin Tool. What this does, essentially, is it places pins along the visible portion of the layer, essentially turning it into a 2D mesh. Now, while the order in which the, pin, the pins are placed does not affect the mesh itself, it will affect how complicated the work will be. More pins means more control, but also more to go through and manage. Keeping it simple and in a structure will help a lot. And to that effect, I've developed a technique where I put the pins that I will use the most down first, and the ones that I will use the least as last. So I know that the tip will be moving a lot, so I create some sort of a bone structure all the way up to the tip of the tail. The tail itself won't move. If it moves, it's going to be very weird, but I know that I won't be needing it to move. And I know that the tip will move a lot. One thing to keep in mind is that every pin you place will be a pivot point to the other one. So if I were to place just two pins here, you can see how one affects the other and you don't really want that. That's why I kind of used some sort of a bone structure and placing the ones that I need the most first will come very handy later on, especially when I start making everything move. So by going down the menu here I can access a deform and you can see all the pins that were placed down. I already know how many pins are probably going to move and to make the move you basically just go down your your timeline and adjust the pins to the movement that you want. Like so. And after a short while, you're go going to have something that you can adjust and refine. And that's the main purpose of this. It's made for subtle and precise movements. And it might be overkill when something much simpler, like a wave, is needed. For example, Rainbow Dash's scarf here would, would work best with one. But just to give you an example here, that's how many keyframes that I required to make, to make the, the movement in Rainbow Dash's tail. It all depends on how you want everything to move. That's down into the animation department, however. Now, for the wave effects themselves, right now I have one that's already applied. But if you want to look for it, in the effects and presets right here, you have a search box in which you can type wave. And it'll give you it will show you the effects containing the mentioned wave. Wave warp is the one that I've currently used. It's, it's the one that I that seems to be working the best. And once it's applied, you have access to all the parameters including the direction, the wave height and width, as well as the speed. And once I'm happy with the look and feel of the animation that I've made, I can go up a level and apply the, uh, the appropriate pony to its poster after adding a few extra effects and what have you. And once that is done, I'm ready to make a final render and import it for a GIF file conversion. Now, I didn't go over all of the little details of the complete process. That would take over 30 minutes to an hour easily. But hopefully this little tutorial gives you what you need to get started on your own projects. Take care.